This is the light that lighteneth every man that comes into the world. We're going to cross the paths of people today, and many of them will look like they've been untouched by the gospel. But the Lord is busy at work. He's going to use us in the most unlikely ways. I was talking to an elderly lady who has spent her ministry in the inner city, working with gang members. It just doesn't seem to fit. I mean, if you were sitting down saying, well, what's your job classification here? Who would you think would be the best person for the job? You see, the Lord Jesus, when he spoke to the woman at the well, he spoke to her about Jewish worship. When he spoke to Nicodemus, he spoke to him about having babies. And you know, you'd think, well, I'd, I'd speak about being born again to the woman at the well and Jewish worship to Nicodemus. But that's not what God does. I would have had Paul on the first bus back to Jerusalem to stand on the temple steps at rush hour and call out the members of the Sanhedrin by their first names. But God didn't do that. He sent Paul to the Gentiles, who had never heard of Malachi or, you know. They, uh, Paul could do backflips in the Old Testament, and he was sent to these pagans who didn't know anything about the Old Testament. And God has his ways of neutralizing anything that we would take for our own glory. He puts us in situations, we say, Lord, I'm not cut out for this. And the Lord says, well, look, I put you together. I know exactly what I want to do with you. And so he puts us into situations where we must lean on him. And then he proves himself faithful. I was flying on the plane from Vancouver down to California one time, sitting beside a woman. And, you know, I just, I was desperate to try and find some point of connection. And I couldn't. She had this shaggy hair and enough makeup to start a little cosmetic shop. And she was talking about her pub crawls and her recent happy divorce and her karma. And like, I just couldn't find any point of connection. And finally she said to me, so what do you do? And I said, well, I can tell you that in four sentences. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The soul that sins dies. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And she looked at me and said, Helen Newfield? Helen Newfield? I haven't thought about her in years. I said, who's Helen Newfield? She said, well, when I was a girl, we lived in a really poor part of the city. But at the end of our subdivision, there was a beautiful old farmhouse with a big yard and shade trees and gardens. And, and they had a little uh, playhouse. And Helen Newfield lived there. She was too old to use the playhouse anymore for playing. But every Saturday, she had a tea party there for all the girls of the neighborhood. And uh, and she would teach us Bible verses. Those are some of the verses I learned as a little girl. And I say, well, thank God for all the hell and new fields in the world, you see. That incorruptible seed of the Word of God was there in her heart. So, if you have an opportunity in some service, some ministry, never forget this principle. By faith, we understand. It, it's not going to be logical. It isn't going to make sense. So think of putting someone in that situation. And yet, that's exactly what God does. And when, at the end of the road, we look back, we say, this was all of God. It wasn't my idea. This was all of God.